down the bar, but they grind on the loot and roll with the diamonds. The finest provider, the social station over survivor, the sign of the time, and the we be shining on the dance floor. Where did you get loose? Everybody put your hands up. Dude's already drunk, ready to pick your mans up. Heading over to the bar, fill up my cup. Ready to play to get the stress out the way. This is a life celebration. We be mad all day. So my microphone working? Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Uh, nice to see you're all here. My name is Dick Eiken. I'm the director of STEIN. And uh, my little job here at this moment is to give you a short introduction on the festival. Um, I'm not going to talk about the history of STEIN. That, that will happen in, in this session right after, uh, after my introduction here. Um, but we've always said to ourselves and to many people who we've been talking about uh, about the festival um, that this is about the now of time. It's 2011 and um, we have this festival and we've called it Patterns and Pleasure. Uh, the name comes from the fact that um, we do what we do because we think it's fun. That's the pleasure part and we think it's important. And it's important because uh, it links to many different Things you know, it, it, it's important for, for music. It's you know, many musicians come to us because they want to innovate themselves. They want to invent new things. But I think, uh, or we think, that we've also that we're also experimenting with with themes, with issues that are more important for than just in, in the music scene. So I'll, I'll talk a bit about the patterns and pleasure parts. Um, most of you may know this, but Stein is very old in terms of uh, in comparison to many other media labs. I'm not sure we may even be the, the oldest media lab in the world. I don't know about that. But it was founded in 1969, and we're still here. And the question, of course, is, and this was you know, particularly the case when, when I came in about three years ago, after a very turbulent period where, where our good friend and, and previous director, Michel Weisvies, died, and we, we barely managed to rescue uh, our funding for, for, for this current period, uh, we were all, you know, we asked ourselves the question, well, what is a laboratory in the 21st century? What is, what, you know, what, what does time need to be uh, in the 21st century? And uh, basically what we do is built on two, two pillars, you could say. Uh, we do research. We investigate things, we invent things, we, 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 we think about things, we try them out. Uh, but Stein has always very much been about the practice of, of, of live performance, of live electronic music and making instruments. As Stein stands for Studio for Electro Instrumental Music. But another thing we've always done is, you know, whatever we've learned in all those projects, we've tried to apply it to different contexts. For, you know, what, what, what could we do for, for, you know, for in, in terms of educational? applications with this particular thing we've been playing with, you know, with, with musicians or composers. What could it mean in other art? What could it mean in other art disciplines? What could it mean in, in sectors like care? Uh, we're, still, we're still always, you know, look out, looking out for all these different applications. Another, the second major pillar of what we do is, is you, could, you could say that's facilitation. We help people invent their stuff. And we have a guest house, there are artists in residencies. Um, we have many different kinds of artists in residencies. You know, you can, you can, you can stay for, for one day or a week or a month or even longer sometimes. We're very open to different kinds of formats in that, in, in that sense. We coach many people. Some people just come by and, and they want to talk to us and we, we discuss their projects. We help them and we coach them through, through what it is that they're doing. And over the years, we've offered many, many courses and workshops, and, and that's actually become even more. If you look at, the, at our current workshop program, it's staggering. There's so many things that, 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 that you can learn when you come to time, and we have so many people that are very willing to teach what they know when they're uh, you know, with us. So <clears throat> at this moment, we are what you could call a hotspot 
rather than a lab almost. Because uh, one thing, one, one important change that we've seen happening over the of the last 10 years is that the emphasis has shifted, and this is actually quite important, the emphasis has sort of shifted from a, you know, an inventor's type of place where we in the laboratory invent things you know, behind closed doors to a place that's uh, more of an open spot where people come to do their thing and to do their thing together with us but also with other parties. We work a lot with, with other partners. I'll, I'll talk a bit about that later. Uh, so it's, 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 it's becoming more a kind of hub in a network that has a very clear identity because of our focus on live performance, but where everybody you know, flocks together and works together. And most of what we, what we do isn't done by people who actually work for Stein. People come to Stein and, and, and do their thing with us, with each other. And many people have, they have more interesting conversations in the guest house while they're making dinner than, than when they talk to us. And that's perfectly fine, you know, as long as, 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 as there is a place where everyone can get together. And so it's a kind of a new kind of lab, more of a meeting place than, than an inventor's place in and of itself. Uh, you, you can invent your stuff with us. Um, <clears throat> in that sense, it's, it's very much a very modern laboratory. Uh, the, the network society is all about infrastructure, about things and places that facilitate people who want to do something. If you look at what the big, who the big players are in the new media world, Google, Facebook, Apple, they're all companies or organizations that offer infrastructure. They don't offer content. Uh, whereas the industrial society was more about you know, the producing of content. Uh, the, uh, what you do in the network society when you want to stimulate invention and innovation is, is, is provide infrastructure, provide tools, environments, uh, contexts, in that sense, it's quite sad that the current government has decided that there will be no more organizational funding for, for labs in the next period, the next funding period, which starts in 2013. So, Stein is in a tough spot. Um, you know, if you can only ask for, for money for projects, it's very hard to say, well, helping, you know, we want to help everybody for a whole year, and that's hardly, you know, you can hardly call that a project. So at this moment, we're thinking very hard how we can solve this, how we can, you know, we, how we can survive in the next five or ten years. Um, our strategy is currently built on, on focusing even more on, on, on knowledge and education, working with courses, with, with educational programs, with universities, with art academies, with music schools. We're very closely working with lots of partners, locally but also internationally. And we'll be developing more commercial activities. We have to. We need to make more of our own money. As time is, in, in a way, we're also too dependent on this one source of, of, of funding, <clears throat> which is the Dutch government. So if anybody has any good ideas, come join us. We need, we need all your help. And we need all the help we can get, basically. Uh, we, we don't really worry, but we do need to, to change things. And in some, some cases, this will mean we'll have to ask money for things that we were giving out for free in the past. But that's something that's, that, that will play out in the next year. And I, hope, uh, I sincerely hope we'll still be there two years, three years, five years, ten years from now. I'd like to celebrate our 50th uh, birthday. Uh, these are some of the parties we work with. We, in, in, in Holland, we very much invested in uh, the places that are very sort of uh, close to us, like the Utrecht School of the Arts and the Royal Conservatory in The Hague. We have a master's degree that we're offening together with uh, the conservatory. It's called Instruments and Interfaces. This is a very new thing. <clears throat> it started two weeks ago, and we're very glad that it's there. And all through the building, <clears throat> you'll see projects and presentations and concerts by people or students from our partners. I like the, the Technical University in Eindhoven or the Amsterdam Conservatory. Uh, many of the other labs, <clears throat> like V2 uh, and the Vaag and, and, and today's art, are very good friends and, and also are also pro possibly partners we'll work more together with in, in the future in order to survive. Uh, and our international network is as strong as it, al as it has always been. Uh, the list is very long. I've mentioned just a couple here. Um, but uh, we, <clears throat> we will also depend on more international collaborations in the future. So that's also something we need to even strengthen. 
Um, in terms of our research, uh, we ask ourselves the question, well, where can the things we do have their applications or where, where can they be meaningful? Are there the things we experiment with? What are the trends? What are the patterns in music? And, what are, and how do they connect to, to more general patterns in the network society? And I've listed a couple of themes here. Past, present, and future. New contexts, intuition, complexity, improvisation, and do-it-yourself. These are all themes that are very closely related to the nature of the network society. Networks work differently than hierarchies. And we've come from a 20th century that was all about modernity and, and control and planning and, 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 and rational thought you know, leading to very predictable results. That was the myth, in a way. And now that that, that that whole concept of that whole hierarchical concept is being taken over by networks, we see that changing into something that's much more chaotic, much more fuzzy, much more fluid. And it's about concepts like these. Had digital archives mean that the past of everything is available to us all the time, everywhere. How is that going to change music? How is that going to change society? These are very important questions. You know, I, I, I believe that. The, the importance of the past will be greater than we even can imagine now in the future. When you have your past and the past of everything around you with you all the time. And so that will actually be the first panel. People are already lined up to, to, to discuss this. Another important innovation is well, what is the context that we make music in or that we make art in? And what, how does that determine what we do? Uh, the, 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 the two traditional contexts for music, namely listening to it on speakers or headphones and listening to it in a live performance setting, are only two examples of where music or performance could be meaningful. And then we'll, we'll, explore, we'll be exploring more contexts or more, more ways of thinking about context later on. Intuition and complexity, those are the themes, uh, are two, also two important themes. Um, as things become more complicated, and we all experience this in our daily lives, and everybody experiences this in, in, in their daily life, uh, things are becoming so complicated that we can't understand them anymore. So it means we have to maybe use our intuition more than ever before. When you can't think about something, you may be able to feel it. And so there's another couple of themes that <clears throat> are actually becoming more important on a general level in our society. And we think our research in music may be informative for, for in a much broader scope. So that's another thing we want to, we want to uh, experiment with in the, in the next couple of years. And then there's improvisation, which is a way of dealing with things that are unpredictable. You know, same story, when things become complicated and unpredictable, you need to act. You still need to act. Well, musicians have an amazing amount of experience improvising. So what can, how can that knowledge that we have, all the people that come to time, all this, all these, with, in, in all these projects, how could we use that kind of knowledge and, 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 and maybe apply it in a broader context? Uh, and in the end, it's all about doing it yourself. Like I said, the network society is more about people doing what it is that they want to do, and labs and organizations and other people helping them. And this actually translates literally, and you'll see this fade away, into the program. Uh, so these are, these are the sessions that are about the subjects I just talked about. And so these are, in a way, the research questions that we want to address. We've, we've started working on these things. If you want to research these kinds of issues, please come to us. We'd love to work with you. But this is, in a way, our research agenda for the next couple of years. Uh, trying to discover those patterns in music and in society and trying to see where they match and where they can inf inform each other, uh, which may also be a way of making more money and, 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 and providing services that people are actually willing to pay for. And, uh, you know, one problem of time is, of course, that our market, if you want to talk about markets, uh, is musicians, and musicians are, you know, don't have any money, basically. <laughs> we all know that. We don't have a market that's filled, you know, that's loaded with cash, so to say. So that's actually a big problem for us. Um, so and then there's, of course, the concerts and, and you know, the lunchtime concerts and, and the evening programs with lots and lots of, of, of music and other kinds of performances. Uh, one thing we've done in the last couple of years is we've said, okay, let's 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 
pick a couple of artists that we really closely work with. And those are the ones that you see on top. On the very top is Alex Nowitz, an opera singer who manipulates his own voice while he sings. And we've created a, you know, a specific instrument, a new instrument for Alex with him. Uh, so you can see him in the concert program. And just below that is Tom Johnson and uh, two jugglers from the Gandini Juggling Company in London. And that's going to be a, quite a spectacular performance on Wednesday evening. Well, Tom has written a piece called Three Notes for Three Jugglers. And um, the Gandinis will perform the piece using juggling balls that make sound, the sonic juggling balls. And we have developed those balls. And uh, after today, we'll be very interested in people who want to do other projects with juggling balls. You're going to have to learn to juggle first, but we have a workshop for that, okay? You, you can actually learn how to juggle in, this, in these three days by the Gandinis, who are supposedly the best in the world. So have a lot of fun in this, in the, in this program. And um, I hope you enjoy everything. I hope you enjoy the talks. Uh, I hope uh, they stimulate your thinking. And uh, I hope you enjoy the concerts. And uh, we'll start off now with the panel. That's actually a good example of how we'd like to work. Um, <clears throat> Sonic Acts, uh, the, the Netherlands Institute for Media Kunst, and uh, V2, and Stime are all working together on this session that's all about Stime's past, but also new ideas about the role of archives and the role of the past in, in art and in music and in the things that we do. So I'm going to give the chair to Adi Altena from V2, who will be your moderator for this uh, panel. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we have the session, The New Past. My name is Ari Altena. I work for V2 as an archivist, uh, but I also work for Sonic Act, so that's my double kind of affiliation. Um, and we have three different parts in the program. Uh, we start off before the break with two presentations. The first one by Christina Andersen, the second one by Nina Weinhardt. Um, am I saying that? Yeah, Weinhardt. And after a short break, we will have a conversation with Lucas van der Velde of Sonic Acts, Steiner van Zulka, who you of course all know, and uh, myself. And everything will be about archiving, or the question, how do we deal with the past? And maybe also questions like, how can we document that which hardly cannot be, hardly can be documented, kind of improvisation, live performances, uh, the things that have happened that sort of, yeah, you might be able to capture on video, but maybe you don't capture what it was about. Um, also the role that the history plays in the making of new works. So we will start off with um, Christina Andersen, and we're kind of working hard to make sure that the image of her laptop comes up on screen. Maybe it's the yes, exactly. Uh, Christina Andersen is uh, is an artist working with electronics, and she's been working at Stime for a very long time, and uh, she's now involved also in the archive 